Good morning. My name is Kelly Barrett and I will be discussing my work with Utah Clean Cities to support in transitioning Utah to a clean fuels future. So it's no surprise that Utah tends to have pretty terrible air quality with many Central Valley cities listed within the top 10 worst in the nation on an annual basis. It's estimated that roughly 85% of those emissions are the result of the combustion of fossil fuels, with the majority coming from motor vehicle emissions. So I'm sure most of you have heard about our wonderful inversion, and if you haven't, look it up and be very thankful for your clean mountain air. <laughs> um, not only is this a major environmental issue, though, uh, poor air quality results in major health implications for vulnerable populations, and air pollution in these areas can and do help reduce life expectancy. With just over 3 million people calling Utah their home, Utah is the 30th most populous state in the U.S., with the majority of the population living in the north central region around the Salt Lake Valley. Historically, Utah has depended on the extraction of natural resources as exports and sources of energy, with most of these industries based in more rural parts of the state. As we move towards transitioning to cleaner energy options within the state, it's vital to ensure that the methods and opportunities are developed in ways that can be adapted and implemented within these communities in focus. Large metropolitan areas have very different needs, politics, and industries than our rural communities do, and as we seek to develop adaptive solutions for building resilient communities, we must develop incentives, toolkits, and programs that really focus on each community's specific priorities and needs. So I had the opportunity to serve as a graduate fellow with Utah Clean Cities since June of last year, with the goal of supporting Utah in transitioning to cleaner fuels and smarter mobility future, and with over 90 partners throughout the state, Utah Clean Cities has been instrumental in promoting and advancing the use of alternative fuels and technologies, as well as supporting emissions reduction by working throughout the state through collaborative projects and partnerships. Utah Clean Cities is just one of nearly 100 coalitions throughout the U.S. that focus on supporting communities across the country to help local decision makers and fleets understand and implement um, alternative and renewable fuels, idle reduction measures, fuel economy improvements, new mobility choices, and also emerging transportation technologies. So my role with Utah Clean Cities was serving between a lead and a support role for a variety of projects. One of my main objectives was de the development of the Beyond Zero Green Fleets program, a program designed to develop collaborative partnerships with fleet managers and supporting and recognizing fleet transitions away from fossil fuels. My current ongoing project at this time um, is actually writing and submitting an upcoming EPA grant addressing environmental justice issues in communities around the Utah Inland Port, uh, which I'll discuss in a little bit. So my main project included the development of the Beyond Zero Green Fleets program. Uh, this program exists to support the advancement of smart mobility models for fleet planning efforts, uh, emphasizing economic prosperity and environmental leadership through collaborative partnerships. So through this program, we aim to advance clean energy and technology initiatives statewide by supporting organizations and fleets in their efforts to reduce vehicle emissions and contribute to, a better, to better air quality for Utah. As a part of this program, partners are provided an in-depth fleet analysis using tools like the A-Fleet Calculator, which was developed by the EPA. Um, they have access to grants and incentives, and they are required to set climate goals during initial consultations to help set reduction goals for each fleet on an annual basis, as well as promoting and sub supporting their transition away from fossil fuels. During the course of the program development, we held listening sessions with an advisory committee made up of existing partners to determine a needs assessment uh, for what fleets were looking for with these types of partnerships. We developed various programming materials, hosted presentations and webinars with partners. We held a virtual recognition event last fall um, that highlighted the annual achievements of our partners as well. Um, a major project from, that was highlighted during this event was actually one with Zion National Park, who's retiring their 20-year-old propane fleet, and then they're transitioning to electric shuttles. So these are just a few of the projects that I supported over the course of my time with Utah Clean Cities so far. With CoreWest and Drive Electric, my support included materials building of digital resources, outreach and project documents, presentations, and also supporting with a public-facing website for both programs. I also attended various coalition sessions with other clean cities that were involved in these projects. For the EV Zion project, as well as supporting as I did with the other programs, I was also tasked with um, developing the RFP to collect bids for electric shuttles to be used during the first two years of the pilot testing on the ground. 
We received seven bids from various companies with electric shuttles and selected a company in February that best fit the scope of our proposal. Two shuttles were will be used during this pilot stage during, starting in October of 2021. And basically, we're just looking at overall durability, which includes the efficiency in various weather conditions within the region. Um, we're looking at weight conditions to replicate riders and then assessing overall scalability. Ultimately, Kane County, who is the major partner on this project and will manage the electric fleet uh, fleet of shuttles after the test period, um, is seeking to develop a more efficient transportation efforts to reduce impacts of emissions, noise, and just overall influx of visitors within the region around Zion National Park. This project is just one piece of the larger transportation planning efforts of Kane County, Utah, to address ever-increasing tourism and impacts throughout southern Utah. They're looking at building the East Zion Visitor Center over the next few years, as well as building out and connecting around 35 to 40 miles of hiking and biking trails outside of Zion National Park, and then building resources to support these gateway communities through the region. So for my most recent project, Utah Clean Cities is in the process of developing our proposal for the EPA's Environmental Justice Small Grants Program to support projects in addressing diesel pollution in underserved communities and living near ports and rail yards as part of the EPA's port initiative. So here in Utah, the Utah Inland Port has been a pretty contentious project that covers 16,000 acres in the western region of the Salt Lake Valley um, to develop a dry port as demands and goods and services um, have increased over the last decade. So through this grant, UCC aims to conduct listening sessions with community partners within the surrounding areas as well as with the workforces within the port. Um, they aim to identify issues that are experienced due to the port and support in developing community-driven solutions to present to the Utah Inland Port Authority's planning boards. While there have been many controversies and injustices at the hands of the government with this port project, UCC hopes that with this project funding, we'll be able to support in centering voices from the affected communities and present our findings to the Utah Inland Port Authority's advisory committees as the development is due to, of the port is basically due to continue. So what comes next? There are many issues and challenges in transitioning to clean energy overall. Within the transportation sector, we recognize that while tailpipe emissions are reduced with cleaner fuels, coal is still a major requirement for the production of electricity, and we need to focus on cleaner wells for energy production. Another challenge is in utilizing some alternative fuels like natural gas. While these fuels are cleaner burning technically than our most accessible fossil fuels, we still need companies to create cleaner technologies to support fleets and transport transportation sector in new and even cleaner fuel alternatives. As we've discussed, it's important to remember that these rural communities, many rely heavily on personal vehicles and these industries, and many of these communities are considered gateway communities here in Utah that are impacted by incoming traffic for industry and tourism. Many already experience economic hardship in these communities, and we have to make sure that their needs are included in these planning efforts. Within Utah, many rural areas are heavily conservative and already pretty skeptical of, of alternative fuel transition. This is where programs like UCC are able to develop discussions with local leaders to provide up-to-date industry news and information and work with them directly to develop adaptive solutions that can hopefully support these communities in transitioning to cleaner technologies in the future. And that's my overview. Thank you to the Utah Clean Cities team that has provided me with a space to learn, create, and really just develop on behalf of the mission. I was new to the sustainability world and I've just learned so much from their expertise. And it's just really allowed me to connect and support with addressing issues in my home state, which has given me a better connection to my community. And also a major thank you to Melanie, who's been my mentor over the past two years and has just been an amazing support throughout my time with the MEM program. I've learned so much and I'll really miss our mentee group sessions. They were a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. And now I'll take any questions.